Hey Yugi Tubers, this is Richard of GK's Apprentice back with you, and today I'm going to be giving you a deck profile of my Hardened Obelisk deck. And um, I know it's not Gravekeepers, but it is something that I've been testing on Dueling Network for several weeks now, and I really like it. And so we're going to get into it. Um, just going to go over the cards right now. It's going to start out with three of Obelisk the Tormentor, the effect version. Um, he's just a really powerful, he takes three tributes and... Um, he cannot be targeted by spells or trap cards. That's really good. And then, so, next we're going to move on to two of Sly for the Sky Dragon. If you have, aren't familiar with this card, basically when a monster comes on the field, they lose 2,000 attack. And if they go to zero because of it, they, they get destroyed, as long as they're in face-up attack position. Next is going to be two Malefic Cyberin Dragons. That's to up the number of level 10 monsters in the deck. And, obviously, they're powerhouses when they hit the field. Uh, next is going to be two of Exodius, the Forbidden Lord. If you're not familiar with Exodius, the Forbidden Lord, I like him a lot with this build because I'm using the hand, Fire and Ice Hand, which a lot of people are not doing with this deck. But for well, Exodius is special summoned by just shuffling all monsters in your graveyard back into your deck. So you can put your hands right back into your deck and use them all over again. Next is going to be Ra's Disciple, three of those. And... If you don't know what this card does, when he's normal or special summoned, you can special summon up to two more Ra's Disciples. And that's really good for getting three tributes on the field if you need to. Next is going to be three of the Hardened Arm Dragon. And if you don't know what this card it is, is when a level 7 or higher monster is tribute summoned with the Hardened Arm Dragon, that monster cannot be destroyed by card effects. So if you tribute summon an Obelisk, the Tormentor, after you are with a Hardened Arm Dragon, it's basically immortal. The only way it can be beaten is in battle or if you can flip it upside down or send it back to the deck without targeting it which is very hard to do there is a sylvan uh xyz or sinker that can do it i believe next is going to be three or also if hardened iron dragon can also be special summoned by discarding a level eight or higher monster which we have plenty of in our deck to special summon so we don't you take up our normal summon for the turn but next is going to be three of the fire hands and everybody knows what these hands are. Everybody's using them right now. Uh, basically, when a fire hand gets destroyed and sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card, as long as the fire hand is in possession, in your possession when it goes to the graveyard, then uh, you can destroy one of your opponent's monsters and, and you can special summon the ice hand, which I'm currently running two of. Now... I like this better than a lot of the defenses that people are using in the deck because people are using things like trap stuns and the gate traps, and uh, I don't like that. I, I, I really like the idea of these ice and fire hands for my defense because it keeps monsters on the field for my tributes, and it's just something that's hard for people to get around. I mean, I know debunk's getting really popular, and people are finding ways around it with cards like Forbidden Chalice is coming back with a, with a raging force. Um, Abyss Dweller, but it's just not something that I have to worry about a lot. Not enough to um, care about. And so next, I'm going to be using a Summoner Monk. And I have one Summoner Monk, basically, so I can bring out a Top Loader, which is my um, tuner for this deck. And he's going to be able to make all kinds of Synchro Monsters. Right now, I only have a few, because this is not my final version of the deck. This is that I've been testing. I'm still working on it, still tweaking it all the time. But next is going to be spells, and we have Mound of the Bound Creator, which is our field spell. And if you're not, have you, if you haven't seen this card, it protects level ten or higher monsters. They cannot be destroyed by card effects or targeted. <coughs> and whenever this card is destroyed, it searches the deck for a divine monster, which includes our three obelisks and two slifers. And also, if a level ten or higher monster on the field destroys a monster, then it takes a, they, uh, the opposing player takes a thousand direct damage. Next is going to be three double summons and double summon is just a super awesome card. Uh, with this deck getting kind of popular now I wouldn't be surprised if double summon got hit to two since it really has no cost to activate. Um, double summon lets you have an extra normal summon or set in your turn and it's at three. I don't know why more decks don't use it. I mean I've after practicing with this um, Obelisk build, I'm thinking about putting Double Summon into my Gravekeeper deck as a tech because it's just would be awesome in a Gravekeeper deck, I think. Next is going to be three Soul Exchanges. That's going to let you use one of your monsters or your opponent's monsters as a tribute. The only downside is being that you can't do your battle phase this turn. 
This is going to be good for cards that can't be destroyed or have effects that go off when they get destroyed, like the hands. If you tribute them, they're not destroyed, their effects can't go off. So then we're going to have a reload. That's in case we draw to a bunk hand and uh, really keeps us our same for Magical Mallet. And then we're going to play one Mystical Space Typhoon just, just in case. I mean, I, I think it's a good tech card to have in the deck. Probably should up it to two. And then I'm going to have one Soul Charge, and that can bring back maybe more than one obelisk i don't know but uh i mean definitely can't or but you can't have your battle phase so really just use it for tributes and then two wiretaps to negate opponent's traps i feel like this card is must have in decks and then i have two of the first monarchs which can act as two tributes for a divine monster if you call divine which you can call divine when you activate the first monarch you don't have to i usually don't i mean it's really not hard to get three tributes out of this deck uh, you're going to be getting obelisk on the field within your first turn a lot of the times and then i'm going to end it with uh the one solemn warning uh it's the only one of that i could really squeeze in and keep it at 40 cards because with this build you're going to want to try to get to the obelisk as quickly as you can uh slifer is a really good option also i've had huge success with him uh, just a quick over the side deck i got debunk light imprisoning mirror shadow imprisoning mirror dark pride a pot of duality a guarded treasure a compulsory evacuation device a starlight road a fossil dyna a phoenix chain two dimensional prisons a mirror force a bottomless trap hole and then a third of the first monarch the extra deck is really rudimentary right now it's going to be an abyss dweller two cyber and dragons for the malefic cyber and dragon a stardust dragon a silent honor arc which there's actually a couple of in here uh, Excaton Knight, a Lava Chain, which is a huge card in this deck. You, that, you want to make it if you can. I mean, it will help you get to the Obelisk super fast. A second Stardust Dragon, and then a second Lava Chain. Uh, this is going to be a level 10 overlay right here that can do 2,000. It's like um, it's like the Gaga Ga Cowboy, except it can do 2,000 damage to your opponent directly. Uh, Ally of Justice, the Light Gazer. It's going to gain 2 with 100 attack for each Light Monster in your opponent's graveyard. It's just a level 8 Synchro. That's a good option. And then... The Stardust Spark Dragon is a really, really awesome level 8 synchro. Ending it up with a Sky, a Sky Palace a level 10 overlay. Um, it's going to let you inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent if you... And it's, it's just a very, very good level 10 uh, overlay. And then the Time Bomb Dire Dire Wolf to end it up. I know that the extra deck isn't very well formed right now. It's something that I'm working on. It's something that I don't really need to use a lot in this build. And so... That's the deck, you guys. I hope you liked it, and let me know what you think. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel for weekly Gravekeeper deck profiles, as well as Yu-Gi-Oh! card game strategy discussion and journal, and dual videos featuring Gravekeeper decks, and possibly this deck in the future, if I like it enough. Um, really hope to get you guys a new deck profile up for my Gravekeeper soon. The only reason I haven't is because I haven't changed my deck in a couple weeks. It's running really, really well for me. Uh, just wanted to get you guys something. So this is going to be it for this week. And make sure to leave your comments in the sec comment section below, along with any tips, criticisms, or suggestions. Have a great week, and good luck at Locals, you guys. This is Richard, signing out.